After living on the Valley Road for six years, Edgar's family moved inside the village. It was there that Edgar spent time in the household of a prominent citizen named Dr. William Perry Bope. Dr. Bope was a reserved yet outspoken man who was never shy about stating his opinion. In a 1965 interview with the Decatur Republican newspaper, Dr. Bope talked about the era in which he graduated from medical school, class of 1897. Doctors were a drug on the market. They should have plowed some of us new graduates under. There were no requirements of internship or state board examinations in those days. The state gave medical graduates a certificate which read, you are now qualified to practice medicine and surgery in all of its branches. That was not true. It was a crime to turn us loose on the public. But by all accounts, Dr. Bope was a blessing on the public. He practiced medicine until he was 96 years old and was seeing patients up until three weeks before his own death. In all, Dr. Bope was a physician for 70 years, 60 of those years being in Decatur. He had a back room in his house filled with carrots, onions, celery, and sacks of potatoes. These vegetables were payment from clients who couldn't afford to give money for medical services. Father Bope was a man of the earth. He was a medical doctor, but he was also a farmer on the side. And he looked at life and through that prism, and he gauged and judged people in that manner. And he certainly found in Edgar a substance of a guy who was a worthwhile person, and he was gonna to see to it that he got a break in life. I think that Bergen acknowledged uh, at certain points publicly how, you know, my grandfather had been his great mentor at a time in his teen years when, you know, most young guys need somebody like that to keep them on the road. Perhaps Edgar felt comfortable in the Bope household because the doctor had a refined understanding of people and their full capabilities. Perhaps the doctor saw talent where others saw silliness. Perhaps Edgar was proud that Decatur's most respected citizen was his friend, and this made Edgar feel popular. Whatever the case, it was during this time that Edgar first imagined becoming a ventriloquist, an illusionist who throws his voice through a puppet. Edgar developed this idea while spending time in the Bope household. Years later, in Chicago, he would invent a famous ventriloquist figure. However, Decatur, Michigan is the place where Edgar Bergen began his show business career and where his ingenious ideas were born.
Just two questions, Mike. We have to do that. There we go. Okay, we're going to try this again. We're going to move this way. So much on my mind. No problem, Mike. We'll just kick things off here, and I got five new problems I gotta solve. No problem. Where is number 217? Over there. My, my, what a load. Who said that? <laughs> uh uh, be careful. Smart fella, huh? Are you making noises at me by any chance? Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Ye gods, a talking horse! Hey, you're making too much noise down there. You're waking up the whole neighborhood. Will you keep quiet? Yeah, will you get along, mister? Oh, a ventriloquist. Throughout Decatur and surrounding communities, Edgar became well known for throwing his voice. A classmate named Harley Smith recalled a school field trip where Edgar did voice tricks to entertain his schoolmates and teacher.
olden days, if a student was disciplined at school, then he could expect a second, and even greater, whooping at home. <laughs>